All right, folks, let's get this show on the road. This mysterious green picture is a look through the Delta Hornet 1 to 6 by 24 rifle scope. It's not a very clear day, so my favorite view of the mountain is not the most appealing thing in the world. Uh, so I'll zoom around a little bit and we'll look at something a little closer, something with more within the focus range of this rifle scope. I have talked about the scope before a little bit. I will start by generally describing uh, what it is and how this works. And then we'll move on and uh, pay a little bit more attention to the reticle. And we'll go uh, from there. Anyhow, so the scope is called Delta Hornet. It's a 1 to 6 by 24 second focal plane scope. It's made in the Philippines. Then imported here, covered turrets and uh, a horseshoe reticle and illumination. In the interest of full disclosure, I have Delta design the reticle. Uh, so some of the things that I like um, in a typical second focal plane LPVO scope, you will see in this reticle. I expect the scope, it's very new, to retail in the $400 range, maybe a little bit under. In many ways, it reminds me the Burris RT6, which was also made in the Philippines. Uh, there are some commonalities, but also uh, uh, some differences, not the least of which is uh, uh, indeed the reticle. I will do a separate, uh, uh, I will insert a picture of the reticle drawing and we'll uh, talk about that toward the end of the video. Optically, the scope does uh, quite nicely. The most important thing in LPVO in many ways is the performance on one power. Right now it's at about three and a half, so this is where we are on one power. And although the camera is not uh, perfectly lined up behind the scope, you can see that uh, grossly the magnification is right around one. And I'm going to rotate it so you have something else uh, uh, to look at. Like, for example, my favorite roof over there. And then I'll zoom in and we'll see. Uh, the blurry edges you see with the camera are not really there. And the scope can be nicely uh, set up so that uh, it's fairly flat and forgiving field of view. As you go up, as you go up in magnification, this is one and a half, and two, and three, four, five, and six. This scope has fixed parallax, and the roof we're looking at is right around 100 yards uh, away from us which is why I'm pointing at it, and you get some idea of the overall color and imaging performance. I try not to post-process color too much, try to make it look very similar to what it has really looked like. The scope has reasonable contrast, reasonable resolution, and very um, faithful, really, uh, picture production. It's not very warm, it's not very cold. It's a nice neutral color. Fortunately, it's kind of a uh, grayish day. Air quality is not awesome right now, so there's no blue sky to look at, but you can see the greens and you can see uh, uh, the texture in the roof. So it's a, a optical, it's a reasonably well uh, worked out scope. I'll point at the nice diffuse background so we can talk a little bit more uh, about the reticle. The reticle has a horseshoe and a center dot. The horseshoe is 3 milliradian in diameter with 0.3 milliradian line thickness calibrated on 6 power naturally. On 1 power everything uh, gets bigger by a factor of 6. The center dot is 0.2 milliradian and then there are holdover marks going out to 600 yards. So the bottom of this uh, uh, vertical main steady the 600 yard hold and 550 is a little hash mark. 500 is another prominent hold, 450, 400, and then uh, uh, 350 and 300. Um, it works best, in my opinion, with a 200 yard zero, but depending on which ammo you use, you can uh, modify your sight in uh, so that the holdovers, uh, holdovers match. They were calculated for an average between 55 and 62 grain ammo out of a 16 inch barrel. So like all BDC reticles, it's not going to be perfect for anything but one load, but this should be close enough for most typical uh, 556 loads. The horizontal steady are basically 
uh, 3 milliradian marks going out to plus minus 5 milliradian on the horizontal to help you level and also to give you some basic lead holds. But by and large, this is a quick shooting radical. It's not really designed for precision per se. We'll, it, uh, uh, matching the holdovers are the wind bars. And the way they are calculated is that you see those horizontal bars near making what looks like a little small runway, a tree, whatever you want to call it. And the left hash of the bar is roughly 5 miles per hour wind, and the right one is roughly uh, 10 miles per hour wind, both for 2, both for 3. Um, should be reasonably close for typical uh, wind holes, but once again, this is not a ultra precision shooting instrument. Um, I, uh, after I got the scope, I went and checked it, and the holdovers in the wind uh, and the wind holds worked well with the 55 grain ammo I was shooting. I can make it work with a 77, but the wind holds end up being a little bit different. Um, if you know how to operate a ballistic calculator, you can make it work. Okay. The radical is illuminated. It is generally day visible, but it's not day bright. I will point you to the roof where it's a little bit easier to see. There are 10 uh, illumination settings. This is the highest. Um, and uh, there you go. only the dot and the horseshoe are illuminated. The tree is not illuminated. The idea is to be able to use this in low light without killing your vision. Uh, United, uh, night adaptation. And during the day against dark objects, it's nicely visible, but otherwise you are relying on, a, on an etched radical. There is an off setting between the, all of the illumination levels. Right now, radical is off. The scope is fairly easy to get behind. The radical seems to work. I'm going to be doing some more shooting with it. Um, I did check tracking, but didn't spend too much time on it. The tracking seems to be reasonable. But this is not a scope designed for dialing, so I didn't dwell on it uh, all that much. Uh, unfortunately, since it's not a clear day, there's not, not that many interesting things to look at. My neighbor has a little... Uh, owl in the roof, presumably to scare the pigeons or something. So let's a little bit closer. That should give you an idea of how the scope does. This is about 30 yards away from us. And you notice on six power, since there's no adjustable focus, it starts looking, uh, the owl looks a little bit blurry. And as we zoom out, the depth of focus increases. Now we're at about two and a half. This is three power. At three power, you can already comfortably shoot things that are fairly close and the um, I looked a little bit at parallax measured parallax is minimal so it's been working quite nicely this is another look at one power it really is true one power best I can tell if you uh, take the time to adjust the eyepiece and dial out all the distortion okay. final look at the mountain and we will wrap up too bad it's a hazy day and this is six. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you know where to find me.